Hello and welcome to our Midweek Bible Moment here at the Fulton Church of Christ. We appreciate you joining us here this afternoon as we uh, have a brief moment of devotional thought as well as some announcements to make. Uh, so we appreciate again you being here and joining us this afternoon and uh, as we get ready for our upcoming classes and such. Um, as far as announcements go this week, remember those who mentioned a sick, we've got a few that we need to add. Uh, remember Robert Johnson. Uh, he has uh, been at the hospital with cancer this past weekend. Uh, they have run some tests and found that his cancer had spread. Uh, they have sent him at home, sent him home with under cost, hospice care. Uh, so they've asked us to remember him in our prayers, remember uh, them uh, as they go through this time. Uh, continue remembering Brother Russell Crosswhite as he is undergoing his treatments. Uh, also remember Brother Ray Justice. He has surgery on his right eye again today. Uh, we're assuming and hoping everything goes well with that, and this will be uh, hopefully his last surgery surgery for a little while on that right eye, but uh, they've asked us to remember them in our prayers. Uh, also remember those we always remember, uh, Vashla Davis, as she's undergoing her treatments. Uh, then team here, Randy Holly with his health issues. Remember Sean Kane with his uh, uh, cancer and his treatments. Uh, remember Penny Gray with her treatments and also remember Linda Weigel Center as she is uh, battling cancer as well. So uh, we've asked to remember all these in our prayers and continue to remember them in their sickness and remember them uh, in their battles with cancer. Uh, uh, as far as sympathy goes, remember this past weekend when well, we lost Miss Beulah Davis uh, from the church here. Uh, we appreciate those who have reached out to the family, and those that are uh, looking to them. I uh, continue encourage you to continue to do that and continue to remember them. Also remember uh, Brother Ron Clayton. We got word this morning that he passed yesterday. Uh, now this is Ron Clayton uh, that lives in Hamilton, Alabama, or was based in Hamilton, Alabama. Uh, he is a missionary to India. Uh, he has uh, him and his wife go there a lot, and they've got a son that's over there. Uh, they've asked us to remember that family in our prayers, so I remember them at this difficult moment as they've lost a dear loved one. Uh, and again, uh, this is one that I want to stress. This is Ronnie Clayton from Hamilton, Alabama. Uh, we know there's a Ronnie Clayton here that's not Ronnie. This is Ron. Uh, he's an older gentleman. Uh, like I say, he's a missionary, so we've been asked to remember him in our prayers uh, as we go forward. Um, Remember other announcements. Uh, remember our Zoom classes. Remember on Monday nights, 10 o'clock or 7 p.m., we meet for our teenagers. Uh, we've been studying the book of Mark. I encourage all the teenagers to make sure they do that. They've done really well with that class and appreciate them. Uh, we're glad to be able to meet with them and to do something with them. Uh, also remember our fifth grade and below class will meet tonight, uh, Wednesday at 6 p.m. Uh, we've been doing various studies with them, so we're glad to have them uh, on board. Uh, then also remember on Wednesday night at 7 o'clock, we have our adult class. We'll have our study of Exodus. We'll be there again tonight. Nine. Uh, we'll be seeing Exodus 24. So I uh, appreciate everyone's attention, everyone's uh, uh, being at those uh, classes. Um, other announcements that we have, remember our 21st Global Mission class, that is at 10 a.m. on Thursdays at the uh, 21st Century Missions Building. Uh, that will be at 10 a.m. Uh, and again, that's on the book on the book of Colossians. So remember that uh, book, uh, that class. Then remember on Tuesday nights, we have our FBI class that has resumed virtually. Uh, we have a video that goes live on Facebook and YouTube every Tuesday night at 7 p.m. Uh, there are notes available if you like those on, those, uh, on that class and you haven't got it so far. Uh, we would love Love to get those to you. Uh, just let us know what, that you need them, and we'll get them to you as soon as we can. Um, so all the announcements that I have and all the things that we've got to uh, do before uh, we get into our Bible study. Uh, I was thinking this week about what to do. As a matter of fact, I was prepping for uh, FBI next week. Uh, in FBI next week, uh, we're studying the minor, the major prophet, excuse me, and we're going to talk about Ezekiel. And whenever I think about Ezekiel, there's one passage that always comes to me and always speaks to me. And it ought to speak to all of us as Christians, ought to warn us about what our role is, what our job is. And it comes from Ezekiel chapter 1, uh, beginning in verse 16 and going through verse 21. I apologize. I didn't put where this ends on the slide here. Uh, but beginning in verse 16, this is what Ezekiel says. And this is part of Ezekiel's call to God, or call by God, to come be his prophet, to speak his truth, to deliver his message to Israel to hear. And although Israel may not listen, Ezekiel is still given the mission to preach it. And this is what he says. At the end of seven days, the word of the Lord came to me. Son of man, I have made you a watchman for the house of Israel. Whenever you hear a word from my mouth, you shall give them warning from me. If I say to the wicked, you shall surely die, and you give him no warning, nor speak to warn the wicked from his wicked way in order to save his life, that wicked person shall die for his iniquity, but his blood I will require at your hand. But if you warn the wicked, and he does not turn from his wickedness or from his wicked way, he shall die for his iniquity." 
but you will have delivered your soul. Again, if a righteous person turns from his righteousness and commits injustice, and I lay a stumbling block before him, and he shall die because you have not warned him, he shall die for his sin, and, a righteous, and his righteous deeds that he has done shall not be remembered. But his blood I will require at your hand. But if you warn the righteous person not to sin, and he does not sin, he shall surely live, because he took warning. And you will have delivered your soul. In this passage, and this is a famous passage from Ezekiel, it speaks of Ezekiel as a watchman. The idea of God says, I made you a watchman. I have put you in this place. We go back to verse 16 where he says, I have made you a watchman for the house of Israel. Now, again, the idea of watchman is something we miss today. But a watchman is a man who is, whose whole job, job was to stand on the wall of a city. Remember their time, cities were surrounded by a wall, and so your enemies had to come in. They had to attack the wall or the gate and try to break in. The watchman's job was to sit there on that wall during his shift, day in, day out. He was sit there on that wall, and he would look for enemies who were coming in. He would look for enemies who were going to break into that city and destroy that city. And his job was that when he saw people coming in, he would blow his trumpet. He would light the fire. He would send up a warning to the people, preparing them and, and, and getting them ready for the enemy that is coming to do their part, to not fall a victim to this thing, uh, not fall victim into this army that's coming, to prepare for what's about to happen. And God says, I made you a watchman. And what's interesting, God says, I've made you a watchman, not of physical Israel, not of Israel's physical standing, because when Ezekiel writes this, Israel is in Babylonian captivity. Israel, Jerusalem as a city with walls is no longer standing. As a matter of fact, it's completely wiped out. It's laid flat. But God says, you are God, Israel's spiritual watchman. And he says, I've made you a watchman, a spiritual watchman. And your job is going to be to warn Israel. And notice what he says here. He lays out three or four different different scenarios. And this is why I want us to look at this whole, whole part. Uh, the end of this is just this verse 17. You've been a watchman, and your job is you shall give a warning to them. If I put a word in your mouth, you hear a word from me to warn the people to change, warn the people not to do this and not do that, because this is going to happen. It's your job to then relay that message to the people. Relay this message to the next person. Relay this message to Israel that they'll repent and they'll come back to me. They won't sin. They says, and this is your job. He says, but let's say this. Notice verse 18. He gives some scenarios. He says, I, if I say to the wicked, if I give you word that the wicked shall surely die, and you don't tell him that, the wicked person is going to die. But the wicked person is not going to die. He's just also going to be held accountable to you, Ezekiel. You're going to be in a spot because you did not warn them. And then he goes on to the next scenario in verse 19. He says, but if you warn him, you tell the wicked man, hey, what you're doing is wrong. What you're doing is sinful. Repent, make your life right. And that man doesn't do it then. He said he's going to die in his iniquity, but you, you have delivered your soul. You've saved yourself. You've done the job of a watchman. He says again in verse 20, if you see a righteous person who commits injustice, and and he has, and he does wrong, but you don't warn him, don't tell him what he's doing wrong. He says, notice again, but I but his blood I require at your hand. You're responsible for telling him what's wrong. But if you did warn him and he does not see him, or you, if you do if the if you do warn him and he does it, uh, then that falls on his head. And then lastly, verse 20, but if you warn the righteous person not to sin, and he does not sin, he shall surely live because he took warning, and you will have delivered your soul. You see, we see the idea of a watchman very clearly in the Bible. We see the watchman very clearly shown in our study of our Christian life. This sums up our Christian mission. We, as individual Christians, are called to be God's watchmen. We're called to be the men and the women on the wall, those looking out for the enemy, those looking out for that enemy that's on the horizon. And when we see that enemy coming, we don't go hide and we don't get scared. We don't tell nobody. We don't say, oh, somebody else will see it. No. When we see an issue, when we see a problem, we see someone in sin, we try to help them. We try to help them however we can. That's the whole job of a watchman to warn of the folly, to warn of the trouble, to warn of the problem that's coming and try to save their life. You see, God will say here that the person is responsible for how they react to that warning. 
But to the watchman, you're responsible for giving that warning, for telling those around you, telling those around us that they need God and what it means to serve God. And that should be a summation of our mission, a summation of who we are, of delivering and preaching God's message to this world. So tonight I want us to think, I want us to ask ourselves, are we being the watchman, the guard that God has called us to? Are we being the one who's watching out for those who've never come to God and trying to find time and trying to find ways to invite them in, to tell them of their sin, to tell them of their wickedness, to tell them the problem they got and then tell them how to solve it, how to find redemption, how to find salvation, how to find love in God? Or do we just sit back and watch them? Do we just sit back and watch them run headlong into sin and don't even try to stop them? Don't even try to warn them. Well, that, that's their response. But no, God says we're watchmen. Just as he told Ezekiel, you are a watchman of Israel. We are watchmen. We ought to watch for those who are outside of Christ to help bring them in. And two, we need to help watch out for each other. Watch out for our brethren. Those we strengthen, those we encourage, that when we see one slipping, when we see one falling away, we encourage them to come back. We encourage them to make their life right. We encourage them to be the people God's called us to be. And when that happens, God says that we won't be guilty. Now, again, this is not to say that God's going to hold us responsible for how other people believe, but he's going to hold us responsible for how we did our job. Did we stand on the wall and did we blow the warning? Do we stand on the wall and we declare the enemy is at the gate? The enemy is here. Stand and fight. Or do we say, oh, he's coming, but it'll be a while. No hurry. Well, that's his decision to do. That's her decision. I don't have anything to do with that. No, we have to be watchmen. Watchmen who are constantly watching out for those around us. Watching out for their well-being. And in doing that, to be a good watchman, we have to watch out for ourselves. We have to make sure we're in the right standing with God. So tonight, are you being that watchman God has called you to be? Are you in the right life that God's called you to be? Are you you living a life that you're serving God as he's called you to serve him? You're being that faithful, true Christian, that faithful, obedient child of his? If not, we encourage you to change your life. If you've never become a Christian, we encourage you to become one. Become one by putting him on that water of baptism. Or if you're a Christian who's stumbled and fallen away, who's no longer being the watchman God's called you to be, come back to God. Ask for his forgiveness. Let him wash you clean. Let him make you right again. And then take up that spot as a watchman. Take up that rightful position as a Christian to warn those around you of the dangers of sin and the dangers that lie ahead. Appreciate you joining us here this afternoon. Again, if you have anything, please let us know. Don't forget, tonight at 6 p.m. we have our kid class. Then at 7 p.m. we start with our adult, our adult Bible class in the book of Exodus. Uh, we're in Exodus 24. Uh, if you get a chance to join us, we'd love to have you. Also, remember on Sunday mornings, we meet at 10 a.m. Uh, we meet for about an hour, uh, depending on how long the preacher preaches. Uh, but that's typically our, our, our aim, and, and we'd love to have you come join us. love to come see us. Uh, again, we thank you for tuning Tuning in. Thank you for watching. Uh, we're going to end with a word of prayer uh, and then we'll be done. Thank you. Let's pray. Dear Lord God, our Father, we thank you for this day and the blessings you've given us. We're thankful for all that we have, Father, and all that you have richly given us and richly provided us, Father. We pray that you would help us as we go through our lives, Father, and as we go through our Christian living, that we will strive to be the watchmen you've called us to be. May we be those men and women who warn others, Father, not of self-righteousness, but of trying to get them to come to you, Father, to see your redemption, see your salvation before it's everlasting too late. We pray now, Father, that you would be with those we mentioned as sick, those not well. We pray that you look after them, Father, as only you can. Now we pray, Father, that you be with Brother Robert Johnson. Look after him with his sickness, Father, with his diagnosis. We know if he's been battling cancer for a while, Father, and now they've sent him home. We just pray that you give him comfort, give him strength, give him peace, Father. Look after him. We pray, Father, that you continue to be with Russ Crosswatt and help him with his treatments and what's going on with him uh we pray father you can see but ashley davis that she'll continue to do well with her treatments and look after her i uh, also pray father that you look after ray justice be with him with his uh surgery we pray father may have been a great success and maybe the last one he has to do for a while father uh, that that'll help him with his eyesight father uh, we also pray that you be with randy holly he'll continue to have good days and good health father and help him uh, continue to do well uh, also be a sean kane father look after him with his uh, treatments and all that's going on in his 
Hislop. I also pray, Father, that you'll be with Penny Gray and Linda Weigel Center as they all battle cancer, Father. We just pray that you look after them and care for them and look and be with them, Father, as only you can. We again, Father, pray that you be with those that are lost in this world, those that are hurting. We pray, Father, that may something be said or something done that will cause them to come to know you and come to see you, Father. We want to be your child before it's everlasting too late to find that hope that exists beyond this life, Father, and that hope of a life with you. We pray now, Father, that you be with those that have lost loved ones, be with those that are suffering. We pray especially this time, Father, you be with the families of Beulah Davis and Ryan Clayton. Be with them, Father, as only you can. Give them comfort and give them strength at these difficult moments. But we pray also, Father, with both of these two, uh, that their families will have comfort and hope and peace, Father, knowing the lives that they live, the 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 way they, they served you, Father, and the way that they strive to be your children. And we just pray, Father, that you give their families hope in that thought and give their family hope in that uh, in that idea. And again, Father, pray to be with all those that are suffering, they're hurting. We know there are many in this world, Father, that are hurting because of various losses, uh, both of life, of job, and various things, Father. We just pray to give them comfort, give them strength, and give them the, the things they need, Father. We also pray, Father, to be at this country, look after its leadership, Father. We pray that you would help it to grow closer to you, Father. Help it to return back to more your values, Father, and be the uh, the nation you'd have us to be, Father. Pray that you'd look after us and that you'd care for us, Father. If we know it without you, Father, that, that this nation will fall and we'll mess up. And we just pray, Father, that you'd help us and we will strive to bring you back and to be uh, put you back in the forefront. And, Father, we pray above all that you be with your church. May you help it to not fall into the idea of this culture, the idea of this world, Father. May it stand apart. May it stand different. May it stand for you, Father, and be uh, the light in this world that you'd have it to be. We pray now, Father, that you just go with us in all that we do. Watch over us and care for us. Forgive us of our sins. Forgive us of our shortcomings. And help us, Father, to live lives that are right with you. And help us, Father, to live in a way that one day we can have that peace and that comfort of being able to have that home with you in heaven. And Father, we just ask all this in your precious Son's name. Amen. Again, appreciate you being here with us. Remember, at 7 p.m. we have our Bible class. Then also on Sunday morning we have that live stream service as well as in person. Uh, again, if you need anything, please let us know. If not, we hope that you're having a God-blessed week, and we look forward to seeing you again soon.